What's going on YouTube? Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, this is my uh, channel icon here. New stickers. Uh, please like, share, subscribe. Uh, this is going to be a video about um, doing a refurbish on a uh, DuPont lighter. And this is the uh, ST DuPont. I believe it's the Line 2 or L-I-N-G, which not sure how to say that in Fr French, but um, this is what it looks like assembled. So first we'll get a give you a quick tour of the lighter itself. And then what we're going to be doing with this video is taking it apart. I won't be removing the valve, but I'm going to be um, installing a flint. I'm going to adjust the valve and hopefully get some gas in here and get this to fully functional. Um, lighter itself is made in France, Paris specifically, and this is a gold-plated lighter. It's 18 karat gold-plated. Uh, 20 microns is the level of plating. Uh, these were made back in the 70s, I believe. So this could be an early 70s model. Um, and then you're always going to see the serial numbers, and they're always hand-punched, so it's normal to see them not even um, but this uh, lighter itself is actually in really good cosmetic shape. Um, it hasn't been mono, uh, monogrammed, so this is normally where you'd, where you'd put a monogram like your initials back in the day, which you can do by unscrewing and having just the um, company, whatever uh, place, put a stencil in there with your initials. And um, again, we're going to going to be cleaning it. I might throw some of the parts in my um, jewelry cleaner where it hits it with uh, micro microwaves. And um, I'm, I'm going to probably do that off camera. But anyways, let's... So I uh, got this through eBay. I've refurbished the line. Um, I think this is the line two. So this is the, the larger one, there, but there's a line one uh, that's a little bit smaller. Um, this is, I guess, more of the man's lighter. So anything bigger back then was considered the man's lighter. But as you can see, it does not strike. Uh, there is no gas coming out. Um, so the first thing you want to do when you're attempting to do this is you want to get an accurate size screwdriver. And just be careful and gentle during the process. Like you don't want to get aggressive or crazy. Um, I like to put all my parts here. Oh, and then there's another way you can tell that it's authentic is by looking at the actual cap itself. There should be paint inside. So this is painted red. So that's hand painted inside. So that also means it's legit. And anytime you have a red, um, it's going to be this actual tip to fill your gas. You cannot fill this lighter with just the regular plastic butane tip. It doesn't work. You have to buy these uh, metal tips through, I got mine through eBay. Um, I don't really wreck the Amazon one. Uh, it was the Amazon one. They were faulty when I got them. They didn't really seal when you put them on. So but I got this from eBay and um, that's what's going to be able to fill the lighter with fluid. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you don't have any fluid in the lighter because you don't want to be working on this thing. <clears throat> and then it, <laughs> put it this way, if it's pressurized and you're now unpressurizing it quickly, um, while you uh, take it apart, oh, let me pause it. I lost my tip. I had to go dig it, dig for it. Oh, and, and those of you who have watched many of my videos, um, <laughs> that guy on my last one, I will not be turning off my fan light. We're keeping it on because <laughs> I don't need to worry about reflections on the coin itself. Uh, but anyways, you want to take your tip and put it in there. And this has some gas in it. So I'll put it by the mic so you can hear it. Not a ton of gas, just a little bit. But you want to basically depressurize it first. 
And there's no guarantees that what I'm about to do is actually going to fix the slider and make it operational, but at least um, you guys will get to see <laughs> what is involved. Um, I did forget to... So I got one of these like watch kits. And um, they come with all sorts of goodies. Really overkill. Like I don't need... I don't really use most of these parts in here. But one day I might. So I've been using this to get the actual pin out and then if it's really difficult or stuck um, I'll use this so this particular part let me move these aside so it focuses better uh, there's a little pin in here and typically it only goes in one direction so it's supposed to have the pin here with the barbs on this end and then this is the side that you push on if it's installed correctly So we're going to see, yeah, and that's not budging. So we're going to take this tool here and we want to get it lined up. So this is a very cheap tool, <laughs> but it does the trick if you line it up just right. I'm going to have to lift it up a little bit more. Okay, here we go. That should do it. So you just kind of slowly screw it there. Make sure I'm actually aiming at the right part here. And of course it's running into this thing now. This is being annoying. Hopefully you guys can see it. I'm not looking through my camera. But again, don't rush this part. Like, do it slowly. Because you don't want to go and crook it or bend it. And then here's a little pin here. So, yeah, that probably has never been removed. And I can tell because my finger got dirty from it. So let me get a little grip here. That's in there real tight. Yeah, I don't think that's ever been removed. Oh. Well, <laughs> looks like someone installed it the wrong way, so no wonder this isn't coming out very easily. All right, let's go the other direction. So it's impossible to see which end is incorrectly, but this is definitely in backwards. There's my little hammer. Here we go. This little watch hammer. So we're gonna hammer this back in. Because this is the, this is the direction it's supposed to go. <laughs> Uh, oh, no wonder that was so hard to push. All right, well now let's do it the right way, the right direction. And I don't edit my videos, guys, so if it goes a little long, so be it. I'm not trying to be in a rush. I'm just trying to show you guys how to do this properly. Get that lined up here. Oops, you guys can't see. It's hard to because it kind of like blends in with the rest of the lighter and you have to like hit it square.
this thing's and then once you do this and you get it actually in there and then you put a little oil in it it's easier to do this later to service the later There we go, finally got it, jeez. There, yeah, I can tell this is the right direction. And again, that's that tool. So again, here it is, and here are the barbs I'm talking about. Let me zoom in a little bit. See the little barbs on the end? All right, this doesn't have barbs in the end. All right. Well, whatever. <laughs> I guess I could have taken it out the other way. Wait, are there barbs? No. Well, this particular post doesn't have barbs, but it did pull out way easier in that direction. Let's take a look at this thing. Yeah, there's a little bit of barbs. So... Ones I've taken apart before are a little easier to see, but this is basically the pin, and now you can see the actual pin hole, and then this comes off. But first, before we do that, we're gonna, we're gonna clean this off. So we got a little um, alcohol. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, instead of cleaning each part on camera, I'm just gonna put them in here and then I'll bring them to my jewelry cleaner. So, sorry guys, that, that took a lot longer than expected, but um, now I can remove this. And there's a little spring that holds this, so you kind of want to open it this way. Okay, and then this part here presses into a spring that's attached to this top part here. So I'll be putting this entire thing in a jewelry cleaner and put that outside the, the area there. And then you press down on this little this little guy here and sometimes these will be really stuck with old flint and this does not have the flint but sometimes when I've bought these um, so see yeah that flint area is like really dirty but this is the wheel that actually spins so when you have a flint there there's a little spring that pushes against the flint and then when you rotate this that flicks the flint and sometimes there's flint inside yep that's some old flint well that's cool that's an old red one too wow so to give you an idea i've purchased the black ones look how small the black ones are and this is like legit sd dupont flint made in Austria but this is like an old school one so I'm gonna install this one so we'll put that on the side I'll put that in a little flint thing there so we don't lose it um, this part here I probably will not put in the jewelry cleaner because I don't I want to deteriorate the paint because that's what makes it authentic uh, but this guy here we're gonna put in the jewelry cleaner the, the spring doesn't really come out so I'll just leave it like that and then after I clean it, I'm going to put a little bit of oil there just so it's nice and gets back to being springy. Uh, the next part that comes off is the, the wheel or the flint part. And this you do have to pay attention. So I will not be cleaning this because this gets instantly filthy with the flint itself. But you want to keep it in the right direction because if you install it upside down, which some of these let you install them upside down. Um, but what will happen is when you flick it, the sparks will go towards you and not towards where the gas is emitting. So we'll put that aside by our flint. Uh, next, we've got some screws in here. See the little screws? Those two screws. So those are going to come out. And... I recommend you get a screwdriver that's the correct size. Let's see how easily these come out. Wow, it's pretty stuck.
Sorry guys, I can't do this on camera. I'm literally pushing down so that I get good contact with the screw. Because otherwise I'll strip it, but I don't know if you guys can see. Well, I'll just get this unscrewed off camera. I'll get them partially unscrewed. So I got the one. Let me get this other one. Oh, Jesus. That's starting to strip on me. Let me get a different blade. I don't want to screw this up. No pun intended, right? So... This one was a little too small. We're going to go with a little bigger just so we get better contact. Jesus, it's in there tight. Wow, this, I can tell this has never been unscrewed ever. So just to show you what I'm doing, because that's a lot of dead off off camera. So I'm I'm putting all my might on the screw, but then you have to hold down. And this is the most important part because you can do a lot of damage if you don't take the screws out. Yeah, these are different. That was in there pretty tough. So I'll be putting that through. Driller cleaner. And it's weird, like this one doesn't really fit in that part there. I don't know if these are aftermarket screws. They were in there really, 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 really tight. Okay, so we'll put those there. And now you guys can see this part here, which that doesn't look right. Why is it just a spring right there? There should be something on the end of that spring. Or is that how this is? Is this how this one set up? No, there's got to be a bottom part. Anyways, we're going to lift up on this that's how it comes off and there should be an end to this spring it shouldn't just be a, a spring like that unless that's how this thing installs yeah there's usually like an end to it hmm well, maybe this is different than the line one, but I don't, I didn't drop any parts. Oh, here it is. It's inside. There it is. Yeah, so this goes in like that. Just never comes off like that. And then when you put your, your door back on, this little ball. goes against that and then it pushes into the spring so i knew it just didn't go into the spring that would be really strange all right then you can take this part off um, that has a little itty bitty spring too which will clean and this lever here is what controls the valve and then when you're Um, adjusting the valve, the pressure, there's like a little thing here that literally just puts a little pressure and then it's supposed to adjust the valve itself. But that wasn't working at all. There was no gas coming out. And then here's the actual wheel. So let me move the camera down a little bit. So maybe you guys can see a little better.
All right, so we'll put this, get that cleaned. Uh, we're gonna get this cleaned in the jewelry cleaner. But if you don't have a jewelry cleaner machine, you can literally go um, buy these little itty bitty Q-tips. You can find them under cell phone cleaning supplies. Just take a little alcohol and go in on it. You don't, I don't do like the buffer or like a, a, a Dremel tool because that would basically take away the patina. I'm just looking to remove the dirt and the grime, but I'm not looking to polish it like a watch. All right, this has tons and tons of debris on it. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's very, very filthy, so that'll be going in the jewelry cleaner as well. And then the valve pops up when you do that. And then this is this is the part that the um, the little uh, flint click. So when the thing clicks over, the little screw. Or I'm sorry, the little spring goes in there with that little flat piece where you can slide the flint release back and forth. So that has its separate part. So we'll clean that. That's just like the spring holder part, I guess. And then, yeah, this is really filthy. So this should just pop right off. Ooh, there's an actually old hair. That's nasty. <laughs> I always have some tweezers too. But there's an old hair on here. It's not my hair. That That's probably like hair from a guy's finger. And that guy's probably dead. <laughs> it's so nasty. <laughs> So sorry if this like is someone's long lost relative. We could have brought your uh, brought your relative back from the dead. But that little hair fell cool. But this has never been clean. Like I can tell. Like this is so bad. All right, so we're gonna put that in the jewelry cleaner because that's nasty. And then you can just see like how gunked up that is. So I'll actually have to clean all this. And then let's see if this is the right size. Yeah. So. You want to just take a screwdriver and see there's like slots there. And then this is where you can like adjust the valve, but oop, I hear a little bit of gas. So that's a good sign. But I decided to do these videos because there's none really in English. It's either like some dude in a third world country. Um, with like literally like bugs flying around or some Italian guy swearing in Italian while he's doing it. So I wanted to give you guys a Chicago English <laughs> version. All right, this is just constantly spinning and spinning around. It's not coming out like the other one did. And again, if it kind of looks like I've never done this before, um, I've never done this before on this actual model. So this is not rehearsed. Dude, that's in there really, really, like, with nastiness. Just come out, you stupid bells. All right, it's just turning and turning. Let's see if we turn it back in. Well, it definitely turns back in. Now let's turn it back out. I'm going to take this out and just, like, there we go. Is it coming out? Dude, what's your problem, man? Come out, Valve. So my other line, I think it's line one, like that came right out. Or maybe it's line two. I think it was line one that I sold. Oh, okay. You have to just screw forever and it eventually does come out. Sorry. The other one, you yeah, didn't have to screw this much. But there was also like a Valve... There's like a rubber valve around that part. Yeah, what is going on? That's different. So the other one used to have like, there was like a valve, like a black part around there, but this one doesn't have it. Yeah, this is different. All right, do we want to mess with that? Does that come out? Yeah, it comes out. There we go. 
All right, and then pay attention to how, how you put it in, so make sure that flat side's that way. But, yeah, this is different. I don't think that's supposed to be there. I think that black thing is supposed to be up here. I think it's supposed to be up there. I don't think it's supposed to be down there. Like right here is this it's a dumb, dumb spot for that. So I'm going to put a little something, something on here. This is just WD-40 gel lubricant. It's easier to work with. It's not as runny, but we're going to kind of lube this old rubber part up. Maybe bring it back to life a little bit. Get a little moisture because I don't think this thing's ever seen the light of day. And then we're going to put it back where it needs to go. So we're going to put this black part over there because that's where it should have been. Not down and deep like that is. My only other experience with valves and stuff is when I used to do uh, paintball guns. But those are easy because they were more modern and you just had like a bunch of parts. Okay, and then probably going to put a little lube on the screw part. And then we'll put a little bit of lube inside here. Just a little, just so that it makes a nice connection. All right, well, this part, is that's how it should come out with this black part here. Um, I'm going to get this all cleaned up, and they're going to reassemble. So this will be video one of a two-point, a two-part video series of refurbishing a DuPont lighter and hopefully video two will show the lighter me assembling the lighter and getting it fully functional and 100% good to go. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and check out the second video if you want to learn how to put this back together. <laughs> hopefully I'll have good success with that. All right. Talk to you in the next one. Bye guys.